All right, it's the middle of the week here on the Morning Pit, youtube.com slash pantherlaircom. I'm Chris Peak from pantherlair.com, panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com. You know the whole spiel. It's the most comprehensive source of pit sports news on the internet. And you see all the headlines up there, and that's just a small sampling of what we had just yesterday. Uh, never mind what we had on Monday and Sunday and Saturday and Friday and every day last week as we move through the busiest recruiting time of the year. If you want to keep up to date on everything going on in pit sports, panther-lair.com pittsburgh.rivals.com is the place to be so make sure you go check out that website and of course we have our uh, video wing our our video department uh, here on <laughs> youtube.com slash panther we do a lot of things we have our live stream every wednesday night that's tonight at 8 30 p.m we go live for an hour to talk about everything going on in the world of pit sports you can use the chat screen during the live stream so you can post your comments and your questions and get in on the conversation it's kind of fun we have a little bit of a back and forth it's like talk radio but um with not as many hot takes not as many commercials and uh yeah, you don't get to get on the phone and hear your own voice on the radio. So I apologize for that. But I try to do my best impression of what I imagine your voice sounds like as I read your comments or your questions and answer the questions and respond to the comments. So, you know, we, we, we do our best to make it like talk radio, just, you know, pit centric and uh, try and make it good <laughs> as best we can right here at youtube.com slash pantheralaircom. So while you're here, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're one of the people watching this video who are not subscribed, do us a solid. Click that subscribe button right down there, and that would be awesome. You can uh, always know what we're doing here at youtube.com slash pantheralaircom, whether it's the live streams like we're doing tonight at 8.30 or these morning pit videos we release every day of the week, Monday through Friday. And we do this every morning just to kind of get you started with the day, like what you need to know about what pit fans are going to be talking about. If you're, you know, if you if you're going to run into pit people on the street or in the office or wherever it is you talk to pit people, you have a group chat or something like that. I try to think of what you're probably going to be talking about that day, and that's what we talk about here on the morning pit. That's kind of uh, that's that's how I, I try to approach it. Just to get your day started. You have your morning shave, your morning shower, and your morning pit. And I got to think, I mean, there's there's a lot to talk about. And there's always a lot that you're going to be talking to other pit fans about when it comes to recruiting and this time of the year with the transfers and the high school prospects and trying to hold on to the current recruiting class. There's a lot to dig into there. But there was some news yesterday as that recruiting class grew by one with the commitment of uh, Bowden, Georgia running back TJ Harvison. Harvison's a three-star prospect on the Rivals.com database. He committed a pit over at his offer sheet here. Boston College, Colorado, Kansas, Kentucky, Michigan State, Ole Miss, Virginia, a bunch of G5 schools in addition to that. He's a bigger back, 6'1", 190, and really productive. Two, more than 2,000 rushing yards this past season, 23 touchdowns, 8.1 yards per carry, rushed for more than 200 yards in the state championship game last Thursday night. To help Bowden win a, a state title there, he goes out as a champion. One of a few, uh, a couple recruits in Pitt's class that ended the season with a championship. And he committed to Pitt uh, yesterday. And that comes on the heels of his official visit. He was in town for an official visit uh, over the weekend. And, you know, I, I think Harvison was leading leaning pretty heavily to pit prior to the visit but he was still looking to you know possibly take another official visit or you know i think he was going to go to kansas this coming weekend so he, he planned it out last week he was going to go to pit for his first official visit kansas for his second one and then make a decision after that well it turns out he didn't need to make that you know decision after that he didn't need any second opinions or take another look at another school or anything for comparison pit was the one that he liked. He told us after the official visit, quote, I loved being at Pitt. That's my top school right now. First off, I just have great relationships with the coaches. Second, from an academic standpoint, they have support all around the school. They'll help me no doubt about it because they have that support for the athletes. And he talked on and on about how, how much he enjoyed the Pitt visit and what he liked about Pitt and all of that. And he ended up committing. Now, Harvison is the second, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, running back commitment in the class of 2020, uh, 2023. Um, joining Montrevious Lloyd, running back out of Florida, another three-star prospect, a guy who isn't necessarily or, or wasn't necessarily as productive um, running the ball this year as Harvison was. Lloyd, 
you know, I think was more of a pass catcher. He lined up in the slot a lot, and, and they did that sort of got him a lot of all-purpose yards or total offense yards, found different ways to get the ball in his hands so he could make plays. And so the different kinds of backs in the class here with uh, with Lloyd and Harvison, and, and maybe kind of complimentary. We list Lloyd at about 5'10", 200 or so, 5'11", 200, 210, somewhere around there. So they're both a little bit on the bigger side. I don't think Lloyd looks all that tall. Harvison looks like he's a little bit taller. Um, but, you know, two backs who, uh, you know, obviously, like I say, Harvison is really productive. And Lloyd has versatility and his ability to be a pass catcher uh, out of the backfield and or lining up in the slot. And I wondered if they would try and take two running backs in this class. Remember, they had a commitment from Jordan Bailey. They signed him last December in the class of 2022. By the time he got to June, Bailey was unable to qualify academically and didn't make it to campus. So they ultimately didn't get a high school running back prospect out of the out of uh, the 2022 recruiting class. They brought in Sebo Flemister as a transfer from Notre Dame to sort of fill that spot when they weren't going to be able to get Bailey on campus. They went looking for a transfer and landed with uh, Flemister, who I-, I think had his moments. You know what I mean? Kind of shined in that last, you know, in the month of November. I think he had he scored a touchdown against Syracuse. I think it was, um, and then you know had a, had a, a you know a good game against Miami in the finale. I think showed some of the po- potential that he's got after some early season struggles when he had some fumbles. Um, I-, I think he finished the season strong, and and I think. Gave you a little bit of optimism about the future. There he is next to Izzy Banacanda right there on the screen. It's good timing, right? I knew that photo would cycle around at some point when I was talking about Sebo Flemister. Uh, you know, I, I think, you know, by the end of the year, you probably felt better about the running back situation for next season than you did maybe at midseason, even if you don't expect Israel Banacanda to come back. And I don't expect Izzy to be back. Um, I, I think he had his big year this year. He's a junior now. And I, I think he's going to try his luck in the NFL. And, and I think the reality is for running backs in the NFL, you're probably, you know, it, it's the rare guy who gets drafted high. You know what I mean? It's the rare back who goes in the first round. And I think a lot of times there ends up being buyer's remorse with that. Not speaking of any situation locally that I could possibly be referencing, but I think sometimes there's there's buyer's remorse, and I, and I think the the league, the NFL, you know, teams and GMs and coaches have generally moved away from taking backs that that early, and you know, they'd rather just pick up what they can down the down the line in the draft or in free agency or what have you. And so for backs, I, I think it makes the most sense, you know, do as much as you can create the resume that you feel comfortable with and then go as fa- as soon as you can. And, you know, for Izzy Abanikanda, it's going after three years. This is what I expect. He hasn't announced anything official yet. But go to the NFL. Maybe, you you know, you're not going to be a first-round draft pick, I would guess. Maybe not a second, depending on how he tests. Uh, you know, I would guess you're probably looking at third round as the high end of what you, you might be able to get. But that's fine. Get drafted somewhere in the third to fifth rounds. Work hard. Try to make a roster and play for that second contract. Ultimately, you're trying to get that second contract, probably with a team other than the one who drafted you, and then you know make your make a go of it. You know, try and get as much try and get as much as you can. So it makes sense why Izzy Banacanda is probably going to go. Uh, you know, and I think we all expect it. I mean, I, I expected it because I thought he was going to have that kind of season. I did not expect Izzy Abandicano to be on the roster in 2023. Uh, I was more bullish on his uh, um, prospects for this past season than a lot of people were in August. I it's I, I don't get a lot of predictions right, but I got it right with Abandicano for whatever reason. I, I just kept thinking that guy was going to break out, and he certainly did in a big, big way. And so... You know, as you started moving through the season and he was having a great year and it became pretty clear that he probably wasn't going to come back for another season, I I think you start thinking about next year and about what Pitt's going to have in 2023. And, you know, obviously you've got Rodney Hammond coming back. Sebo Flemister has another year. Pat Narduzzi said it very specifically, very explicitly during a press conference at one point midseason. He said, I hope Sebo comes back. We want him to come back for another season. Uh, you know, Daniel Carter presumably will come back to be a redshirt senior, although he's more of a fullback than a tailback, so I don't know if we really count him in this group. But that's kind of it as far as returning upperclassmen among the, the running backs. You know, if, if a Bannikanda leaves, you've got Hammond and Flemister, assuming Flemister comes back. And so it, it sort of made a lot of sense that they would take two backs, and it's almost kind of curious that they would 
not take their second back until December. They didn't offer TJ Harvison until November. Um, so it was almost like they didn't feel a pressing need to get a second back beyond Montrevious Lloyd. But I think when you look at Harvison, I mean, he makes a lot of sense. And maybe they just wanted to see some senior film, and, or maybe they were just convinced by the senior film. But either way, I think it makes a lot of sense why the pit staff would go after Harvison. And I think you, you got to like how he you know, projects. The wild card here, and we talked about it yesterday, is Derek Davis. Former Gateway standout four-star prospect in the class of 2021. Number six recruit in the state of Pennsylvania, I think. Six or seven, somewhere around there in his class. Went to LSU. Uh, as a, as a four star safety prospect, uh, I think he was number 101 nationally in the class. So I mean, a really highly rated guy. Played in like all all 12 games. I talked about this yesterday on the on the morning pit, so I don't need to fully recap his entire career. But he played in all 12 games as a freshman in 2021. Only played in four games this past year. Uh, you know, when he played as a freshman, it was almost all on special teams. Most of his playing time this past year was on special teams, except for against like well, I forget whatever team they've implied i mean it was like their uh you know alabama state or something like that you know it was, it was their their fcs game uh he he got a decent amount of snaps on defense not a ton and then at the very end of the season like week 12 i think it was they played uab and he got five snaps and they were all on offense he took five handoffs and ran for 28 yards and it was basically like lsu's final drive of the game he had like four handoffs on that drive and then they got the ball back for one more snap he took another handoff and ran for five yards and I really think if he goes to Pitt, if Derek Davis, he entered the transfer portal on Monday, and I really think if Derek Davis does end up transferring to Pitt, I think it could be as a running back. Um, you know, they, they can always use more safeties. They can always use more outside linebackers for sure. We, we know how much they like to stockpile those positions and get, uh, um, you know, rotations going there. But I really think if he were to go, if he does end up transferring to Pitt, and there's a lot of speculation that he will, I think it'll be as a running back. I think he'll come in on offense and, and join that running back room that, you know, if you add in Montrevious Lloyd and TJ Harvison and Derek Davis to go with Rodney Hammond and Sebo Flemister, not to mention Daniel Carter in there as a fullback, I mean, set Carter aside, you got five scholarship backs, five talented scholarship backs. I think each with his own sort of level of promise. I mean, we know what Rodney Hammond is. The only thing we haven't seen Rodney Hammond really do is over the course of a season or, you know, 10 games or something like that, we haven't seen him be the guy, the number one back. We've seen him be the number one back in games here or there, um, but and, and certainly in quarters, you know, the last season in 2021, it seemed like that was his thing, that he would come in in the fourth quarter. Andre Powell even made this point that, you know, Rodney Hammond would come in in the fourth quarter when the defense was worn down, and he would just bull him over. Um, you know, and and it was impressive. You know, we haven't seen him be the guy consistently week to week. You know, pretty much throughout a season, playing the entire game as the number one back. But I'm willing to give it a try. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm sold enough on Rodney Hammond of what he's shown and what his ability seems to be that I'm pretty sure he can be a number one running back in the ACC and probably be a pretty good one too. Uh, actually, that was my, uh, that was my prediction. That was my prediction. One of my predictions before the season, I think was that Pitt would have the ACC's leading rusher two years in a row with a band in 2022 and Rodney Hammond in 2023. So I'm gonna have to revisit that. I'll probably try and bring that up at least once a month just so I remind myself next, so that when we get to next August, I can make that prediction again to reiterate that prediction. You know what I mean? Come back to it, revisit it and say, hey, I made this two-year prediction in August of 2022. I'm half right so far. Let's see if the second, you know, the second mayor comes in. So I think Hammond will be cut out for the role. Right, and then if you have Sebo Flemister as, as his backup, and and if Flemister is playing the way that he played, you know certainly in the month of November, I, I think when he really sort of settled in and became, uh, like I say, it just settled in. I, I think is what it came down to. You know, I don't know if he was pressing in some of those early games when he had a couple fumbles. Uh, I don't I don't know what it was, but he seemed comfortable and and he showed some explosiveness. He ran like a man on a mission in that game in Miami, and if he brings that kind of energy to the you know the the number two back role which will get carries i mean there, there'll be i mean we've seen this this offense I, I think it's safe to say there'll be enough carries to grow around to keep everybody happy and so he'll he'll have a role 
And if he brings that same energy next season that he had at different points this season, I think he could be a really good, you know, complimentary piece to Rodney Hammond. And then you mix in the freshman, Mark Montavious Lloyd and, and uh, uh, TJ Harbison, because you assume, I mean, at some point, somebody's going to get hurt. You know, it, it's just inevitable. Is he a Benicanda missed time? I mean, like, I, every back misses time. You know, guys get hurt. Guys get banged up. It's a physical position, particularly in an offense like this where they're going to run it a lot and they're going to try and play a physical style of, of running, of run game football. Um, guys are going to get hurt. I mean, it's just sort of inevitable. And so you're going to need your third back to be ready and your fourth back to be ready. And that could be Lloyd, that could be Harvison, and that could be Derek Davis if he ends up coming here. And the thing about Derek Davis, I mean, I I didn't scroll all the way through the UAB game to watch him take five handoffs against, you know, in the end of a fourth quarter of a, you know, three touchdown blowout or whatever it was against UAB in the, you know, mid November. But I did go back and watch some of his highlights from Gateway. Now, granted, this was from his junior season. I, I don't think he played his senior year. That was 2020. The world was weird at that point. I, I forget if he actually even played. I know there were a few guys locally who just opted out. I think Elliot Donald was one of them who just chose not to play in 2020. And and I think Davis might have done the same thing. But just watching his film from his junior year, the thing Derek Davis has, and I'm not sure he's a great shake and bake guy. I'm not sure if he's going to make a lot of guys miss. He might be able to make one guy miss. But if he makes that one guy miss, I think he's a home run hitter who can take off and go the distance. All right, And that, you know, I think is was a skill he had in high school. And I think it's something that as long as he hasn't completely lost his speed, he, he might have bulked up a little bit to play defense at LSU. But you know, if you can get him back into sort of his track shape, so to speak, he might be a, a real candidate to, to get some some playing time and get some carries and, and contribute as maybe as the number three back, affording you the luxury to possibly redshirt at least one, if not both, of the freshmen when they get there. So it, it's an intriguing running back room. And, you know, one with the possibility to sort of carry over the success they had this season, maybe into next year. Uh, you know, it's it's nice to have one day at least where we're just not going to talk about the passing game. Like, like uh, we haven't talked about Pitt's passing game for the last few days. But it's nice to have a day where we're talking about Pitt's offense and we don't have to talk about the passing game. And the reason is because this is just focused on the running backs. But I think that group, if, if you have Hammond, Flemister, Davis, Lloyd, Harbison, with Carter as a fullback, I like it. I, I like that room a lot. You know, I like I like the veterans, returning players. I like the potential of the freshmen. I think T.J. Harbison is a physical guy who might be able to, you know, give you a few snaps as a freshman. And, and then I, I, I like sort of the wild card of Derek Davis if he ends up transferring to Pitt. And then you roll the clock forward to 2024. Uh, Sebo Flemister is going to, you know, if he comes back for 2023, he'll be a super senior. So he'll be done. He can't play in 2024. But if you roll the clock forward to 24, you've got Rodney Hammond. You've got Lloyd and Harvison. You've potentially got Davis. And you've got whoever you signed in the 2024 recruiting class. You roll the clock forward to 25. Now you, you know, you, you, Hammond's gone. Carter, if he comes back for a super senior season in 2024, either way, he's not coming back in 2025. But you've got Lloyd, you've got Harvison, you've got one last year of Derek Davis. Again, if he transfers and stays for three seasons, because he's got three years of eligibility left to play, plus whoever you signed in 24 and 25. I guess my point is this. The running back room, I, I think by signing these two guys as freshmen in, in Montrevious Lloyd and TJ Harvison, and then potentially bringing in Derek Davis as a transfer, I think you almost, almost entirely in the month of December, you've bulked up that room to a competitive size, you know, with with, with talented players, and and enough depth to survive, uh, and enough of, you know quality depth to survive an injury or two if you run into those, or, and maybe not if, but when you run into those, and so. I guess what I'm saying is I'm, I'm feeling a little bullish on this running back room. Now, I mean, I, you know, you need to get Sebo Flemister back. You need to get Derek Davis to transfer. And, and I think i giving away the premium info here. I I think he does want to come to Pitt. And I mean, that's not, it's not really, I mean, that's what we've written on the message boards at PantherLair.com a lot lately. Uh, but I think that's sort of well known around Western Pennsylvania. I think there's a strong desire by Derek Davis to come home and play at Pitt. Um, for his next three years of eligibility. Uh, 
but I mean, you would need that to happen. You would need Flemister to come back and nothing crazy or weird to happen between now and the start of next season with any of these other guys. But it's, a, I think it's a good room and I think it's a, a strong room with potential, um, some versatility, different types of players who can do different types of things that you can use in different types of ways. And it's a good room. I like it. I kind of, you know, I, I was sort of, and, and we'll leave on this note, um, just kind of glancing back over running back recruiting in the last four years. And I guess before you even try to like think about names, before I even get my names out here, like quick response, pitch running back recruiting, you know, since 2018, let's say 2018, cause that would be the five classes that should be on the roster this year, right? 2022 pitch running back recruiting since 2018 has been good or bad. Just quick response. What, what's the first word that comes to your mind? I think for me, when I first asked myself that question, I said, it's been good. You know, I mean, I I think about Izzy Bannikan. I think about Rodney Hammond. um, And that sort of just kind of carries me over, you know. But I wrote down all the names of who they've recruited since 2018. Uh, Running backs, right? So in the class of 2018, they signed Michael Salahuddin, who was a four-star prospect. He was here for like a year. I don't know if he stayed through the 2019 season or transferred in August that year. Either way, he ended up at uh, North Carolina A&T where he played defensive back for the last two years and now he's in the transfer portal as a graduate transfer, a lockdown defender, as he calls himself uh, on Twitter, um, looking for a new home for his final year, his super senior season of college football. So that one didn't work out. Philippe Carter, I don't know if we would count that. I I don't think we would. I mean, he signed as a defensive back. He was mostly here as a defensive back. He ends up uh, playing running back and having a great game against Duke a couple times. Uh, And then he transferred to Albany, and it was sort of his bad luck. He transferred to Albany after the 2019 season, gets there in 2020 when the season is canceled. So I don't think he's played any football since then because after 2020, he left Albany. So I, I don't think he has played any football since the end of the 2019 season and um i'm not really sure what Vlee carter has been up to i think he's i don't know what he's been up to 2019 they signed two guys vincent davis and daniel carter daniel carter being the you know fullback and vincent davis you know i i presume his his season his pit career is over i should say uh, I, I didn't really mention him there. Technically, he could come back for the 2023 season as a super senior. My guess is he will not. My guess is he will want to go somewhere. Maybe following the lead of Todd Sibley, who transferred to Albany and had a great season this past year. You know, really went out on top. Had a great final year of college football. Playing at Albany, playing a lot, producing. Uh, you know, really just having a great year. And maybe Vincent Davis would want to follow suit and do something similar. Um with his final year of eligibility. I, I presume that the pit coaches would like to use his scholarship spot for someone else. And I presume that he would probably like to go somewhere else as well. Uh, but I think he's been a solid player over the past four years. I think he's been a good teammate. He's, uh, you know, seems to have had a good attitude about things. Never really got hurt. Always ran hard, always played hard. He had some bad fumbles this season. I think in the Georgia tech game that really cost them. Uh, but ultimately, I mean, uh, I don't have any bad things to say about Vincent Davis. He wasn't a a star number one running back for this team over the past four seasons, Uh, but he was a a, a key contributor, made some big plays in different spots, and uh, I have nothing really negative to say there. 2020, they signed Israel Banakanda, who obviously that one worked out, even though I think most people spent uh, the bulk of their time thinking about how they lost Henry Parrish in that class as opposed to who they signed. That's uh, sort of inevitable. 2021, they signed Rodney Hammond. That one was good. Malik Newton also signed in that class. And I thought that was going to be good. I thought that was going to be really good. But he ended up uh, being me- medically disqualified, I think is the, the term that was used. I think he went to West Virginia State. I should have looked this up before uh started here. Yeah, he went to West Virginia State. I forget if he transferred somewhere from there i don't really see much i'll just try one more yeah yeah i think it it might have uh might have just been west virginia state so 
you know, I, I thought he was going to be a really good back. I thought he was going to be a, a good player for Pitt. And, uh, but the medical disqualification just didn't work out. I'm not sure what he did this year. 2021, he averaged five yards a carry, rushed for 600 yards, three touchdowns. This past season, let me see if I can just bring his stats up real quick because I'm curious what Malik Newton was up to. Uh, he did not record a carry this past season for West Virginia State. So not sure what happened there. Can't really uh, track him down. Not going to spend too much time here doing it. I thought he would be good, but medical disqualification. What are you going to do? And then 2022, like I said, they signed Jordan Bailey, and that didn't work out. He uh, you know, wasn't able to make the grades and didn't enroll. So out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys that they signed from 2018 to 2022, two of them never even got to the season in Malik Newton and Jordan Bailey for different reasons. So that leaves five. Um, one transferred away in Michael Salahuddin. And then the other four, Vincent Davis, Daniel Carter, Israel Banikander, Rodney Hammond. That's four contributors, you know, four guys who played a lot, four guys who have, you know, scored touchdowns, uh, four guys who have been parts of big wins, four guys who were parts of the ACC championship run. Uh, to varying degrees, they each had, you know, Daniel Carter's role was not what Izzy Abanacanda's role was. You know, Vincent Davis and Rodney Hammond did not contribute the same. You know, Vincent Davis and Izzy Abanacanda did not contribute the same. But overall, I I think it's a solid group of backs. You know, uh, you know, good or not. And particularly when you talk about the kind of offense that they played in for, you know, we're talking since 2018, four out of the last five years, they played in an offense, well, as I should say, three out of the last four years, they played in an offense that didn't want to run the ball at all. And so to still get pretty good production out of the backs, pretty good performance out of the backs, and pretty reliable, um, you know, just reliable backfields, I think it's a pretty solid group. You'd like to have five, six great backs out of five recruiting classes, but that's kind of tough to pull off. You know, you, you, you have a certain hit rate that you aim for, and if they signed seven since 2018 and four out of the seven have been reliable contributors that's not bad i'll take that and i think you add in these two guys uh from this 2023 recruiting class and you give yourself an even greater chance at a hit rate because you took more guys so a uh, little trip down memory lane of uh pit running back recruiting in the wake of pit landing a running back yesterday with tj harvison committee that brings pitch recruiting class up to 15 prospects now It'd be interesting to see how far they go with this. We'll, we'll probably dig into this more later in the week and certainly heading into signing day. Um, but 15 recruits, 15 scholarship recruits in the class. It's looking like all 15 are going to stand pat. Let's we'll knock on wood about that one. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens heading toward signing day next Wednesday. It's a week from today. I can't believe that. I better start getting ready because <laughs> I got a lot to do between now and then i think we all uh we all know how that goes so thanks for watching uh today's morning pit though i appreciate it uh we'll have plenty more coverage of pit recruiting pit transfers pit basketball pit everything right here on the morning pit and of course we have all of our coverage right there at pantherlayer.com panther-layer.com pittsburgh.rivals.com the most comprehensive source of pit sports news on the internet football basketball and recruiting all there panther Lair. Dot com pittsburgh.rivals.com thanks again for watching the video today hope you've had a great week so far hope this is a great wednesday don't forget tonight at 8 30 p.m we will be live right here on youtube.com slash panther for the panther Lair show so you can tune in then and get in on the conversation right uh you know with all your comments all your questions all our uh, discussion back and forth should be a lot of fun we're gonna have a lot to talk about so tune in tonight at 8 30 p.m all right, have a great Wednesday. We will talk to you tonight, and then we'll see you again tomorrow morning for the Morning Pit on youtube.com slash